Hi everybody, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and today I am bringing you my new free pattern, a cottage Christmas toy blanket. You can get this free pattern by clicking on the link below. It's going to send you to my blog post and if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see a box that says get my free pattern here and I will send it straight to your inbox. You're going to find links for the materials and for a couple of tutorials that you might find helpful in making this blanket, but I can't wait to get started and to share everything with you. I got the idea to make a little toy blanket after I made this little sweater. So this is the little teddy bear that I made a couple of months ago and he had the little dog sweater. I really loved him and I really didn't have time to make another toy because I'm already working on something else but I wanted to make a Christmas sweater. These patterns are from Little Cotton Rabbits, the teddy bear pattern as well as the little Norwegian sweater and the little shorts. I wanted to do this in the Natura cotton which is something that I've recently started using for toy making and I really love to use this to make the clothes for the Little Cotton Rabbits and I just loved this bright red and the white together. I thought it looked just so beautiful and the idea came to me, hmm, with this red and the green and the white, I bet a little granny square blanket for a teddy bear would be so, so cute. So I got out my crochet hook and I started making some little granny squares and I decided that I wanted to use that red, the green, and the white from the teddy bear's clothing and I wanted it to have the white background and I decided to alternate red and green squares. These are classic granny squares and if you don't know how to do them or need a little refresher, I actually have a full video tutorial which I will link below as well. I ended up making 30 squares but what's great about this blanket is that you can customize it so if you have a big toy. Maybe you've got American Girl dolls or something like that that they're 18 inch. You just make more squares. So that's what's beautiful about this. You can also customize the colors for whatever you're working on. So I just happened to use the red, the green, and the white from the sweater and the little shorts. But whatever you're using for clothing for a toy, I think this would be really, really wonderful to make the blanket with the exact yarn that you're using. So this is the Natura Cotton and I used a three 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. I messed up counting and I ended up with 34 squares so I decided to make a teeny tiny little pillow for him. So there's just four little squares here and I added the little border and I just think this was really fun to add just to have a little pillow. That's all. In this video I'm not going to show you how to crochet granny squares because I've already got that video which will be linked below but I am going to show you how I joined these together and my little trick for for making that joining just a little bit easier. The easiest way I have found to join these squares is to leave the long tails after you finish your final round here and then make sure that when you grab your two squares that the tails are at the bottom left corner of both of your squares. Then you're going to put your squares together. These are the wrong sides, put them together. So now you have your tail up here at the right top corner and you still have one tail down here on the bottom left corner. So I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn needle and thread it up. So the first thing I like to do is to take my tail here and just slip it over to the stitch to the right so that I'm right in the middle of that chain to space. Because now I'm going to go ahead and start joining. But what I'm doing is I'm only taking half of the stitch from the top square and half of the stitch from the bottom square. So I'll just show you what I mean here. So I'm going to take this bottom half of this stitch and pull it through. And let me get that one out of the way. Then I'm just going to go through the top half of this stitch and the top half of this stitch so that I'm always only working with the half of the bottom stitch and half of the top stitch, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I don't want all the bulk of going under the full stitch here. I'm only going through half and I'm matching up each one of these stitches and it actually is pretty easy to do. You can see, especially with your chain two spaces, you should be able to look right through your granny square and see your space there. Then I'm going through half there. I'm going all the way down 
And then it gets a little bit trickier as you get to your chain spaces, but just do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. And then I just like to go to the very center again. So now my little two squares are joined. Because we kept our tails in the correct place, we are actually ready to join this next one exactly the same way. So I'm going to make sure that the tails are on the bottom left side of my squares when I'm laying them right side up. But when I join them together, I'm going to push them together, wrong sides together, I'll be able to work with my tail right here at the right top corner and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Once you come to the end of each one of the squares and you've joined them and you're in that corner, don't trim your tail here. You're not going to trim and weave these tails in. We're actually going to use them to join our rows together. So now I have most of my tails on one side of my row now. I always end up with one. I don't know how I do it, but I always end up with one that's on the wrong side. So if you do, you could actually just sew it all the way to the side that you want it. But I want these on this side and so basically I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take all of these tails that I have and I am going to use them to seam this to my little blanket here. I'm going to find my needle somewhere. I always lose that too. Oh good, I'm already exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to be working not straight down all the way across. It's actually going to be just working one or two squares at a time. And I just try to match up exactly where I ended up here. So I'm kind of right here in this little corner here. And I just match them up and pretty much this isn't super exact. Just do the best you can and if it's not lined up the way you like it, it's easy to take it out and redo it. But I honestly don't stress too much and I like for those spaces, the chain two spaces to be lined up and I feel like that's what makes this work really well. And I try not to split the stitches because that's a little bit noticeable as well because this Natura Just Cotton is, like I've talked about before, it's a little bit splitty. It's okay though, it's a really pretty cotton yarn. I love the matte finish to it. It's just really pretty and I wanted it to match my teddy bear sweater. So I make sure, especially in the corners, that I am matched up well. And then once I finish this end here, this is when I will take this tail right here and I will weave in the ends for this one. But I'm just gonna leave it here for now and I'm going to take this tail and seam up here. I just continue to do this all the way down the row here, matching up the corners, matching up each one of the squares and it works really well this way and it's super simple and you can do it as you go. So now all of my tails are on the right side of my work so I just take them to the back and I just weave in my ends just like you would any other project. And then we're gonna add the border. This is the one I'm so excited about. So now I'm gonna go ahead and join my border color to a corner here. So I'm just gonna go right into the corner here and just slip stitch to start. Pull that little tight. And then I'm gonna chain one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go through each one of the stitches here. I'm going to go under each one of these stitches in my squares from the final round and I'm going to single crochet. And when I get to that chain one space from the final round, I'm just going to single crochet right into that space. And I'm just going to keep going into every single stitch right here on the square. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. You might be able to hear Jersey um, begging in the background. <laughs> Now we're at the chain two space for the corner from the previous round and I'm going to just single crochet into that. 
Then I'm going to chain one and I'm gonna go right into the chain two corner space of the next square. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue all the way across one side of the little blanket. And then I will show you what we're going to do for the corners. So now I'm at my corner of my blanket here and I am going to single crochet three times in this little corner. It will make it be able to go all the way around. And then I'm just going to go ahead and continue to single crochet around the edge, just like I did around the top edge. Okay, I tested to make sure that this green and red and white were color fast before I started to block it. But this is gonna make a huge difference if I block this little blanket before I add my border. I did add the one single crochet border all the way around the edge. That's just sort of a finishing touch. But then I'm going to block this puppy and it's gonna look amazing. like to add that little single crochet border because I feel like it just finishes it off. It creates a nice clean base to add a decorative border like this little green one here. I found the tutorial from Daisy Farm Crafts. If you do not know Daisy Farm Crafts, you need to check them out. It's a mother-daughter pair and they have some of the most beautiful crocheted blanket patterns out there and they have tons of tutorials for how to do them. So I did this for their little dot border and I will leave a link for that as well, which you'll find all of this in the free pattern. If you get that but I just love how this added just a really fun little border and I feel like with the granny squares there's that little vintage feel it feels really old-fashioned in the best way possible but then you add this little dot border it's kind of a little bobble border and I feel like it just brings it into today it makes it look modern but not in a bad way modern I mean modern and current and really fun and I just really love how this turned out this is just really beautiful and I am so glad to have this, but I wanna show you how you can make this a really special little gift as well. One of the things that I really love to do is to make a toy or a handmade gift look really special, and that's adding a little tag. That way you can let that person know that this was specially made for them. And I have a set of printable tags, and actually they come with holiday cards as well, that you can get that specifically show that you made something for someone. So this one says, Merry Christmas, Hand made just for you and I'm going to add this one you can print your cards on any color cardstock that you would like right from your very own printer and I'm going to add the white because I think this would look really good and I'm going to look through my ribbon stash and see which ribbon is going to look the best with this project I'm so excited So I decided to go with a really pretty, just simple white ribbon with some twine. I think this is gonna look really nice together. And all I need to do is take my little printable tag here and I need to punch a little hole in here so that I can put my ribbon in here. I'm gonna put my little pillow right here on the top. I'm gonna wrap this like a little package here and this is where I'm going to add the little tag. I will leave a link for the tag in the description box below so that you can get them for yourself. They're very inexpensive. They make a really nice little addition to any project that you are making. I love how this turned out. I just folded up the Cottage Christmas toy blanket and I put the little pillow that I made and I just added my ribbon and the little gift tag and I just think that this makes this so special it makes it look professional but also let someone know that this was handmade just for them and I will leave a link for how you can get your very own printable tags in the description box below I 
I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you get your Cottage Christmas toy blanket pattern. You'll find the link for that in the description box below. My daughter actually said to me today, I wish you had known how to do all of these things when we were little, but I'm going to be doing them for my grandchildren. I'm gonna get really good at it before I have grandbabies one of these days. But I really think that this would make a beautiful little addition to a handmade gift that you're making this year. Please get your free pattern. You can also find the link for the little gift tags that you can print on your very own printer as well. And if you like this video, please give me a like. And if you would subscribe, that would be wonderful. I hope you have a very wonderful holiday season. Stay safe out there and happy stitching.